Yep. I prepared myself. <laughs> yeah, I'm hiding my face. I'm still looking though, okay? Hey, what's up guys? Hope everyone out there is doing well. My name is Mike and we're about to get into a reaction for the film Sinister from 2012. Uh, this is another horror movie for uh, the month of October. Uh, trying to fit in as many horror movies as I can, which is my favorite genre. Uh, this is a request. This is going to be for two of some of my favorite people on the, that frequent my channel. This is going to be for Linda and also for Glenn. So, um, yeah, I'm excited for this one. I have known nothing about it, but uh, except for what I read, which I'm about to read here from Google. But uh, let me go ahead and do that. So, Sinister is a 2012 American supernatural horror film directed by Scott Derrickson, written by C. Robert Cargill and Derrickson. That's C. Robert Cargill and Derrickson. Is that two different people? It stars Ethan Hawke as a struggling true crime writer whose discovery of videos depicting grisly murders in his new house puts his family in danger. Okay, so um, I I don't know what kind of horror movie this is going to be as far as um, supernatural or gore, you know, like uh, slasher type stuff. I'm not sure. But um, this did get a 63% on Rotten Tomatoes. That's a pretty decent score for a horror movie. Not going to lie. NGL. So yeah, I'm excited for this. I think we're ready to dive in, get a drink or a snack. Let's do this. Sinister 2012, here we go. I am a fan of Ethan Hawke's work too, by the way. He's a good actor. Dude, that's a scary intro. Just turned up all the way, by the way. Crazy first shot. Someone cutting that tree? What is that? Who's cutting? Oh my god. It's insane that we opened up with this shot. It's like immediately letting you know this is going to be a twisted movie. Was that a supernatural thing doing the cutting? Or is there a guy hiding behind that branch or something? This is crazy. We, we cut from that to just normality. It's from Bob. It's from my office. It's fragile. You see? So this is a, uh, this is a nice house. An autograph? I just thought that Are we... you kidding me? <laughs> I don't even know what that's about, but that was funny. I know that, uh, the one guy with the book, too. He was in, uh, The Wire. He was in something else. Oh, he was in It. Sheriff? Your husband around? Ashley? Sweetheart. What are you doing? Painting. Yeah, I know. I think your mom wants your help unpacking. Why don't you come outside with me and you can finish your painting later? Because I didn't want to move here. I shouldn't have to carry boxes. We had to move here and we all have to help carry boxes. That's right. The new story I'm writing is here. Why can you just keep writing in the old house? Oh, that's why he wanted the autograph. I'll tell you what. If we don't like it here, once I sell my book, we'll move back. But only if we don't like it here. Really? Really. You promise? I promise, but you have to promise to try to like it here. No, come with me. Move some boxes. He, he's uh, got brown hair. His wife has blonde hair. And she has red hair. Already? Very nice this time. I'm always nice. I'm not kidding. I'm tired of driving five miles under the speed limit. I need to get ticketed anyway. Be nice. Or is that like dyed blonde hair and she's really redhead? I don't know. Is there a problem? No, sir. Just a friendly visit. I appreciate that, Ellison Oswald. I know who you are. Say <laughs> oh. not a fan. No. Uh, well, what can I do for you? Not much, I expect, unless I can convince you to load those boxes back on that truck and leave as soon as you're able. No, I don't think so. But you know what? I do have a couple extra copies of Kentucky Blood in my office. If you want me to get one out and sign it for you, I'll do that. All right. Is it the writing? More a matter of content. You don't seem to care much for our profession. Not everybody in your profession gets it right. Well, I've read your books. Neither do you. Mm. Oh, you got it right in Kentucky Blood. I'll give you that. Fine piece of writing. Cold Ember Morning, you got it wrong. Blood Diner? Yeah, that wasn't my fault. Your bad theory helped a killer go free. You ruin people's lives. Now, this town doesn't need that. It needs to heal. It needs to forget. And we sure don't want that circus that you bring with you. Well, there's a missing girl involved here. She ain't missing. She's dead. Come on. You don't know that. If that girl is still alive, then it ain't no miracle, and we ain't ever going to find her. You don't think the town deserves an explanation? You can never explain something like this. Now, we did our job. You'll see that. And this is just another waste of your time, like your last two books. If writing true crime has taught me one thing, it's that whenever an officer of the law 
tells me that I'm wasting my time it just means he thinks he's wasting his. That's clever. You ought to write that down. Well, <laughs> I'm going to go out on a limb, and oh, man. your department is not at my disposal. Well, what do you know? You can still get things right on occasion. Hey, so he's oh, here to and, uh, investigate a case. I find this to be in extremely bad taste. Okay, he must have moved into the person who went missing's house or something. That's why he told him to, like, move. Why was he pointing at the house? Ellison, we didn't move in a few houses down from a crime scene again, did we? Tracy, no, this, this don't is the crime anything. scene house. If we did, I don't want to know about it. You do. Promise? I promise. Dude, I should, I bet that tree is somewhere out there. I didn't even, t I didn't even notice if it already showed it. That's where the tree's gonna be. Dude, they just left it like that? So the camera was right there. Why would a... Ugh. Why would a scorpion be up there? They're not like creatures that live in attics. Ew. Watch me be wrong about scorpions and I'll get someone in the comments like, What a f***ing idiot, man. You don't know anything about scorpions, dude. Oh yeah, this is the, uh, in the synopsis. Family family family. Hanging out. Oh. Barbecue 79. I've also got noodles and fortune cookies. Oh, that looks good. I'm starving right now, too. Is the story a good one this time? Yeah, it's good. Of course it is. Will you take me and show me where it happened? Trevor, your father writes about terrible, terrible things, but I don't want you Why knowing you anything about it. Like I shouldn't be writing That's about not it. What I mean. That's the way you say it. Let's at least make sure your office stays locked. Okay. One thing to hear about it, it's another thing to see it. I don't want him walking in again. He's 12 years old. What's the first rule? Never, Never go, go in dad's, dad's office. office. And what's the rule? Always lock dad's office. That's right. How long are we here for this time? Oh, God, I don't know. It could be a long one. I liked it better when you were writing fiction. <laughs> Maybe you should try again. Tracy, I can't do this without you by I'm my sorry, side. I'm sorry. Sounds like she's given up everything for his career. We're all happy. I just need another hit. That's all. Just one more. He just talks about it like it's a drug. Kentucky blood was 10 years ago. Mm. It's been that long since you had a hit. What if that was your 15 minutes? Ouch. Oh, what if it was? You can't just spend the rest of your life chasing after it. If you miss out on these years with the kids, you won't get them back. I just need one more chance, that's all. You know, I don't think I can do this again. No, you're not gonna have to. No, you mean it. If this goes sour, like last time, I'll take Trevor and Ashley and go back home to my sisters. Ouch. Is that fair? It is. But it's not gonna go sour. <laughs> I'm gonna kick some off. That's... That's weird. I'm gonna leave you. This doesn't go right. Okay, have fun. Kick some ass. Yeah, but to be fair, I mean, she... It seems like she's given up her life moving from place to place for him, but, so yeah. Why didn't he just take a picture of the box when it was up there? What the hell? Let's do this. Does this home video have this soundtrack too, this music? Or is that just music in the movie? Like who's filming them? So he didn't know that it was filmed. Or like, no one knew it was filmed, huh? Man. He basically just saw a snuff film. He's watching it again? Did you have to write that down? Isn't that obvious? An obvious question?
Why wouldn't they move that branch also? Why would they leave it like that? Wait, is this supernatural horror too? Oh man, I don't know if I'm prepped for... I was thinking this was going to be like a whodunit kind of horror. Oh, dude. I didn't prep for this, man. Daddy, I can't bring oh. you back. Anymore. Man, that was a low blow. Getting me like that. Look at all these new paintings. You're really getting good. Maybe one day I'll paint something really good. Then I'll be famous like you. <laughs> sure you will, princess. And daddy? Yes. Are you going to write a really good book this time so we can go home? I'm going to write the best book that anyone. So, is there something twisted on all of these? So this is like a killer who just like stalks people. What the f***? Dude, what's up with that music? So is this music on the tapes? Oh my god. Dude, that's horrible. Oh. Operator. Oh, yeah. The King County Police, please. Is this an emergency? Ah, uh, yes. So I don't know what's going on, man. I don't know if this is a, a whodunit horror, or if this is going to be, like, supernatural, or what. King County Police Department, how may I direct your call? King County Police Department, how may I direct your call? Hello? Uh, so you're thinking... About how the police won't help him, right? Is that why he didn't say anything? The sheriff said, you're not going to get cooperation from us. You came back and left the box. Why? Wait. So the title says kind of what happened, right? Hanging out was one of them. That was the family. Barbecue was the car being set on fire. Oh, no. So the dude, the killer, could be hanging around or something if he left the box up there? Nope, not Ashley. I hope you have a weapon, dude. The hell? It sounded like it was upstairs. Now it's like in the hallway. The hell? What the hell? What the f Oh my gosh, yes, right? Come on, come on, come on, wake up. Wake up, wake up, wake up. Trevor, wake up for me, alright? Hey, look at the stars. Trevor, Trevor. Dude, what in the hell was that? Why are we outside? Alright, but you're having a bad dream, okay? One of those night terrors. These were over. It's just the stress of the move. I found him in one of the moving boxes. So, so this has happened to him before? What is it? What's the matter? I, I want to I wanna tell you something. I'm just really sorry. It's not your fault. I was in a box? You were in a box. I don't remember any of that. Yeah, well, it's not the strangest place we've ever found you. Did Trevor try to pee in the dryer again? Mom! Ashley, honey, no. Your brother just had a night pad. Is that like a bad dream? Have a nice morning with your murder victims. Uh, yes, dear. Come on, Trevor, where's your notebook? Hey, that tree's right outside, too. Okay, time for more messed up footage. I'm guessing this is going to involve uh, drowning or something.
Oh, God. Oh, that's horrible. Dude. So, were these all in this town? Or was this... What the hell? Oh my god! What the hell was that? There's like someone underwater or something. So there's two of them? Like there's someone filming it, but then... Why is he underwater? What the hell? Oh, dude! Shoot! Does that film burn if you pause it or something? Oh, okay, he's just gonna record it. What the hell? That's so creepy. And I wasn't thinking. That's your problem. You don't think. You want to be treated like an adult, but you don't act like one. But yeah, because you and Dad do lots of thinking. If you did, we wouldn't be here. You don't here. know what you're talking about. I know more than you. Go to your room, Trevor. Hey, Mom! hey, 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 what happened? Mom's overreacting. Your son is acting out again. What did you do? He drew a picture. He drew a picture with a permanent marker on the classroom whiteboard. Tell him what you drew. I drew a tree with four people hanging from it. Oh, man. Your book is about a family that was hung? Yeah. Christ, Ellison! But that's all he heard? That's not enough. I'm sorry he had to find out like this. All right, I am. But bad things happen to good people, and they still need to have their story told. They deserve that much. You're a real man of the people. But they still don't know that it was that house, do they? Putting the kids to bed. Oh, uh, kiss them goodnight for me. You getting good work done? Yeah. Good. Please keep the door closed. Uh, he's drinking a lot, huh? Oh, God, here's another one. wonder which one this was. What were the titles again? I forgot. Dude, these are really, these are twisted, man. Some real sinister stuff. Oh, I don't like this music. Oh my god. Oh no! I don't need to see that, man. Tell me there's kids too. Oh man. I think in this case, the sheriff would give cooperation if this stuff was in the house. I think, you know, past, you know, transgressions would be put aside. Yeah, what was that? I, I noticed there was something weird on the wall. It's like a symbol. Oh, don't tell me we're gonna see that thing again. Gonna make it brighter? Uh, contrast, yeah. St. Louis? Is that what it said? Ah, oh, sleepy time. Dude, the years on these things... This is a long period of time. New details today in the grisly murders of a local family found earlier this week. Police have released this photo of Christopher Miller, the missing 13-year-old son of William and Penny Miller. The Millers, along with their younger son, were found stabbed inside their home. A kid went missing there, too. Dude. There has to be something supernatural about this. It's not just a whodunit. Oh, no. This is like the creakiest house on Earth. Oh, God, this is scary, man. <laughs> oh, no. God, I know it's coming. There's going to be some kind of scare. I'm not ready for it, guys. I'm sorry. Oh, jeez. 
Okay, when he thinks it's nothing and he puts his guard down, that's when the jump scare is going to hit. Yep. I prepared myself. <laughs> yeah, I'm hiding my face. I'm still looking though, okay? You ever wonder who writes music, this ambient like horror music like this? Where it's like, not traditional music, but just scary tones. Just one single scary note. I bet I could write this kind of music. Oh no. If it is supernatural, I don't think this knife is gonna do anything. Oh no, is it behind him? Oh no, please just be an animal or something. It sounds like an animal. Raccoon or something. Ah! Oh, Jesus Christ, man. Ugh. Ah, oh, dude. This is terrifying, man. What is that? Oh, it's moving. Why the hell is it moving? In no way is that kind of snake naturally in a house. What was that? Is that like a coral snake? Family hanging out. Mr. Boogie. It's like Cold the pool, party. right? Yeah. Mr. Boogie. That's not a very scary name. Mr. Boogie. Oh wait, I put my guard down. Maybe there's gonna be another jump scare. Like, what even shut the attic hatch door? Oh, Jesus Christ. Just fall, just fall. If that didn't wake the family up. Really, I'm fine. I'd prefer to take you down to the hospital than have this checked out. I think you should get stitches. And I'm not gonna go. So. Let's, uh, let's go see this hole. But the ladder wasn't down. No, it wasn't. It's not possible to close it from inside the attic. No. So oh, yeah, the ladder. Get up there. I didn't say anyone was up there. I just said it sounded like there was an intruder. I did see a small snake, though. Snakes don't have feet. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Well, uh, officer, thank you very much. If there's anything else I can do for you? Actually, there is. Sign I left this my copy book. of Kentucky Blood down at the station. It would really mean a lot to me if you signed a copy. Of course, I got a few extra copies of my office. <laughs> Thank you so much. Dude, you might as well tell him about the tapes. You got a map with pictures connected with yarn and everything. Deputy. You know there's a page in your books where you always say nice things about all the people that helped you out? The acknowledgments? Yeah, well, and in each one there's always like a line that says, you know, I, I couldn't have done this without the tireless. He's going to ask him to write that? Well, I, you know, I could be like, you know, your deputy. Oh. He can help. There are a few things you could do for me, actually. Really? Yeah, this could be perfect. Do you have a notepad? He's lucky that this guy came. I need the street address of a crime. 1998 St. Louis. I also need any details you can get me on another murder. 1979, a family was burned alive, parked inside their own car in their own garage. I can definitely get this for you. I gotta wait till the sheriff leaves the office, but I will get it. This, this works out for him. I know the move's been hard for you. Trying out, I really am. Just want you here with me. I've always been with you, and I'm with you now. They're uh, trying to hold it together, man. Pleased to have Ellison Oswald on our program tonight. His new book is called Kentucky Blood. It's pretty graphic stuff. So let me stop asking why spend so much time investigating. He's reliving his old glory, I guess. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. The the honest answer is that I. He does uh, look a lot younger than really driven by a sense of injustice. But in police work, getting something wrong means ruining people's lives. Good crime writing can set things right. What feels better, seeing justice done or seeing your book, Kentucky Blood, number one? The justice. Mm -hmm. Without question. I'd rather cut my hands off than write a book for fame or money. 
Okay, well, I yeah, I think he has the wrong motivations, man. Whoa, he saved a bunch of them. Holy crap, he is like uh, doing it for the fame. So, yeah, that's Mr. Boogie. Oh, this is letting him know where they were, where he was in the, the video, huh? But he's not... Oh, he is there. Holy crap. Was he standing like this? <laughs> oh, man. Mr. Boogie. Is he like off to the side? Oh shoot. Dude. He does look freaky. Dude, he looks like a, a black metal musician or something. Are you making daddy his coffee? Yes. Can I help? I want to bring it to him. Sure, honey. We have to make it just right. Very particular about his coffee. Yeah, I just do the pods and keep it simple. Brought you your coffee, Daddy. Oh, thank you, sweetheart. Oh. Yeah, hello. Hey, Mr. Oswald. She wanted to spend time with him. She wanted to see him, man. I got what you asked about. There was a Martinez family in Sacramento, California that died in their garage in 1979. And their car was set on fire. One of their sons, he was nine years old. They never found him. Do you have a street address? And what about St. Louis? 2976 Piedmont Way. Wait, did you say 2976, like 2976? Yeah, why? Does that mean something to you? Uh, no, no, it doesn't. Thank you. Thank you, deputy. Dude, you could have been more polite about it and just, like, gave him time to say bye. Before the Stevensons moved here, he lived where the Miller family murders happened. Holy shit. Oh, what the hell? Please tell me you saw that. I think he saw it in his peripherals. Right? No! Oh my god! Oh jeez. What was he saying before that we saw the face? The last family lived where the last terrible thing happened. Dude, that's not- Oh no, it went on by itself! Yeah, and he's like the only light sleeper in the house. What the hell? Is there someone in the doorway? Oh man. It's gonna be something screwed up, or even worse, his kids are watching it. Trevor? Oh god, please tell me the kid isn't watching it. What is happening? Turn it off. What, what is happening? Oh God! Oh! Oh! That's right. Why don't you boogie with that bat? This is this movie is not what I expected, man. It's a dog or something. Oh no, it's a son. Again. Oh god, is he okay? I found him outside. We have to put a lock on his door. It's way worse than it was. I'll call the doctor in the morning. Dude. I left something outside. Where did he leave? The bat? Oh, his phone. Oh god. What's gonna happen now? Hey, there was a dog. It's okay, boy. You're good a good dog. dog. <laughs> good dog. Good boy. I you just want to get my bat. So oh my god. Me, I can bash your head in. Okay. That's fine. You keep it. Yeah, you know what? It's it saw the people. The dog saw the people and got scared. You're okay. Yeah, fine. What fine. the hell? Too old to still be having these. He was supposed to have outgrown them by now. Oh, he's alright. He's okay. Just stop. 
Drop the book. We can pack up, get out of town, and never look back. You know why? Because he's having some no, night no, terrors? No, no, it's more than that. What are you talking you about? You've for less than a week, and you're already a mess. Uh, you yes, never crack into the whiskey this early. You never this early. There's something you aren't telling me. Something that's eating you up, and whatever it is, it seems to be getting to Trevor as well. I'd never been onto something this big before. Do you remember how it was when I was riding Kentucky? Do you remember that? I remember. Uh, well, this is much bigger than that. Much. He's losing it, man. A uh, movie deal, uh, talk show circuit. Ah, oh, wrong reasons, man. You know, we could live wherever I don't we want to. Yes, you that. do. Everybody oh, does a little bit. This is my shot, Tracy. I'm just worried about you. Well, don't be. Nothing is wrong. Then why did you Dude, come as white as a ghost? Because I saw a dog. A very big dog. I'm Cujo <laughs> I mean, I... I just need a little more time, okay? I promise it's worth it. Every minute that we're here, we're a minute closer to that happy ending that we always dreamed of. We're almost there. It's like he's descending into madness or something. Adam, that's over. Really? Yeah. Thanks. Do you think I could come in for a second? Uh... Just say yeah. Don't be a dick. I know what you must think of me. Some small town deputy that's starstruck. Not some local moron. Uh -huh. Say so you were... I have a degree in criminology. I also know a series of connected murders when I see one, Mr. Oswald. Listen, we missed something. I get that. But if you want me to run interference for you while you get this worked out, I gotta be in the loop. Just a little bit. Is he gonna tell him about the tapes? Who is that? I don't know. That's what I'm hoping to find out. You think these are serial murders? Mm, maybe. More ritualized than necessarily serial. First one I found dates back to the 60s. Wait, that would put the guy, what, in his 70s? Or his 60s. In some cases, the killer drugged his victims. Wait, with what? Well, they couldn't tell for sure. But by drugging them, the killer removes his need to overpower them. Here he used a tree branch to do the heavy lifting. They left family on fire. He slit their throats. The first family to drown. Yeah, but who cut the tree branch? It looked like it, the axe was just floating. In each instance, the killer murdered the entire family except one, a child, which he took with him. This symbol appears in several of the crime scenes. Oh, I didn't even notice that was on the car. You might want to call the university. There's a professor over there, Professor Jonas. He's an occult crime expert. So where do you think that drowning happened? That's what I need you to find out. Very resourceful officer in this, man. It's funny because he's like, I'm not a moron, but in The Wire, he kind of plays a moron. This is nice to see him uh, play someone with some sense. Yeah, have we seen all the tapes already? Oh no, it's another one. I didn't even pay attention to what the title of this one was. Are these always families of four? And then he has a family of four. I feel like they're gonna be a target or something. Oh no. Don't tell me. Don't tell me. Oh God! Oh, Jesus Christ. Oh, this f***ing soundtrack, man. Oh my God. <laughs> that sound was horrible, man. That sound was worse than what we were seeing. And what we were seeing was pretty bad. Better turn that thing off before it burns up again. Professor Jonas? Yes. Hey, hello. Hey, thank you for getting back to me so oh, quickly. Dude. Oh, that guy was in a full metal jacket, man. Symbol uh, that you sent me is isn't a pentagram. It's not something that you would see teenagers or a Norwegian black metal band hanged on a wall. No, this is a little bit more obscure than that. That's from the late 90s, the car hood. That is from Sacramento. Tell me about the, the one in Sacramento. It's a symbol associated with the worship of a pagan deity. A, a very obscure one, dating back to Babylonian times, named Bagul. What the hell eater is in the children. corner? Did you say eater? What the hell is that? Thank you, Jessica. Looks like the saw uh, doll thing. Now, the fragments of stories revolve around him needing the souls of human children to survive. Bagul, boogie? Each story involves a different way that he lures or tricks these children away 
from the physical world and traps them in his own netherworld and he consumes their souls over time. Now, any worship of this deity would include uh, blood sacrifice. So you're saying the person that made this symbol is, is eating children? Well, that would fit the stories. I would be like, yo, professor, by the way, what is that freaking saw-looking doll behind you? So this might be more of a cult initiation rather than, you know, the actual actions of any one man. There's been another one, hasn't there? I think so. Tell me everything you can. Oh, he's finally going to show someone. Oh, no. Didn't he just box that stuff up? Oh, dude. Oh, man. What was it behind him? Am I seeing things? Oh, Jesus. All right, get your bat, even though it's not going to do anything. Didn't he just box all that stuff up? God, you know, I, I have to give it to the, the music in this movie. The ambient, scary-ass music is doing its job, man. Oh, oh my God! Jesus Christ! What the hell? Oh, God! God, that was terrifying. <sighs> Gotta get the hell out of that house. Oh no! Dude! These are like the, the kids that went missing. Oh god. The jump scares are coming faster, man. Oh no. That's the, uh, oh, Jesus. That's the kid from, uh, the Sleepy Time House. What are they doing? They're all, like, diving into other rooms and stuff. Oh, no, it's on again. <laughs> God. Dude. Another jump scare coming, probably. What is it? Oh no! Oh my god! Oh. So the daughter sees him. What if they're trying to go after the daughter, man? This is terrifying. This movie is terrifying, man. Don't be another jump scare when I least expect it. Interesting way they did a time lapse there. And was he gonna send those to the professor? I don't know. So I uh, appreciate you coming by, officer. Oh yeah, not a problem. <laughs> so we're, we're we're becoming friends, right? I, I suppose, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I can trust you, right? Yeah, absolutely. Was there anything weird about the Stevensons? No complaints from them about anything strange? No, not to my knowledge. The investigators, did they notice anything odd or inexplicable about the house? Mr. Oswald, is, is there something that you want to tell me? <laughs> A lot. Okay, look, clearly something happened and you want to talk to somebody about it, right? Yeah. Okay, well, does your wife know about it? Does she know whose house this is, was? Oh, that is a conversation that I would not want to be around for. So what? Saw something weird? Heard something spooky in the house? What exactly? Seeing things, man. I don't believe in any, um, you know, stuff. Stuff, you mean the, the supernatural, the metaphysical, the paranormal, that type of stuff? Right. <laughs> right. Never would have moved into a crime scene if you did, but here we are having this conversation. But there was, there was none of that with the Stevensons, huh? No. They never called the police. They never had the police called on them. I think that you moved yourself into the house of murder victims. And, and you're spooking yourself out. Trying to put yourself in that headspace. 
you've begun discovering things about this case that go to darker places than you were prepared for. I also think that every time that I come to your house, there's a whiskey bottle in your office that oh, doesn't no, appear to be no, the no, slightest no, no, bit no. neglected. But, I'm not saying that, that you have a drinking problem. Right. Okay, I don't think I, that. You put yourself under so much stress that your mind is trying to process all of it at once. So you don't believe in any of that otherworldly stuff, right? Are you kidding me? I believe in all that stuff. I wouldn't sleep one night in this place. Are you nuts? Why did the camera switch like that? To just circle? Was there something I was supposed to see in the background? I'm sorry. You know what? You should try and get out more, Mr. Oswald. Try to clear your head. He should try to get out more. He should leave. That's what he should do. Save your family. Last night, I thought something was in the house. If you sleep in this house, it's just gonna do terrible things to your head. Alison! Your daughter apparently thought there wasn't enough room on her walls for her new painting. I wanted to paint her picture, but she didn't want it in my room because that used to be her brother's room. Who are you talking about? Ugh. She's the one Daddy's writing his book about. Oh, now she knows. Ashley, go to your room and shut the door. Oh, no. Now you're gonna have that conversation. What the hell were you thinking? <sighs> Did you think I wouldn't find out? Don't blame me for not telling you, okay? Because remember, you never wanted to know. Don't you try and pin this on me! Me. I asked you! I asked you! The more important question, how was the daughter talking to a ghost? So you're house. saying it didn't happen here? No! It happened in the backyard. Oh, that's oh, yeah. so sorry! What on earth possessed you to move We've here? We've never been this broke before. That's okay, no excuse! So what Trevor drew last week, that happened here. Yes. Previous owners of this home were hung from a tree in our backyard. Yes. Our son is having night terrors and drawing pictures of this crime at school. Our daughter just painted a little dead girl on our wall. Technically, she's missing. They don't know. I don't want to hear about technicalities. Do you understand what you've done this time? The kind of jeopardy you've put your children in. Your marriage. Yes, I do. I understand. You won't do for your goddamn book. I guess this is all worth it to you. Putting your family at risk. R risk of what? Of more paintings? Don't. You felt sorry for the little girl, so she painted a picture. Wow. What else oh, yeah, do you want see. from me? How about a home where we feel safe? How about a life? that doesn't involve our kids drawing and painting the sick details of some horrific tragedy. This book isn't for us. Yes, it it's is. for you. Tracy, don't say you. that. Don't say that. That's not true. Other ways you can provide for this family. Doing what? Teaching? Dude. Uh, editing, journalism, textbook. This is award level acting from both of them. Writing is what gives my life meaning. It, these books are, are my legacy. He's so blind to it, man. This marriage, that's the meaning of your life. I, your kids are your legacy. I'm actually kind of hoping they leave now to save them. If he's not gonna, you know, do what's necessary, maybe they can leave. Are Dude, is she gonna see that other drawing that the ghost girl did? Oh no. Dude, that's so freaking, so sad that he's watching his own stuff like that. He's so blind to it, man. He's, he just likes the fame. Is he actually going to go to bed, have one normal night? Don't tell me the projector. Wait. What is this? Dude, what is this? Oh my god. Fuck it. Projector again. You're losing it, man. You gotta get out of there. Get your family out. Oh my god. There's no baseball bat big enough to save you from whatever this is, man. What the hell? What? God, where the hell is that projection? Oh, this movie is so terrifying. I had no idea, man, what to expect. What is happening? Nothing good, dude. That's such a freaky shot, man. That ladder. Dude, sounds like a freaking motorcycle's up there. At least with these headphones. 
What the hell? What the hell? Oh, oh my god! Oh. Get out! Enough's enough, dude. Oh god! Get the f out of this house. Destroy it, yes! Finally, man. Dude, it's just driving him nuts, man. Driving him nuts and, and not just... It's not just psychological. There's something happening, man. There's some supernatural force here. What the hell are you doing? We have to leave here. Thank you. You were right. I made a mistake. We should have never come to this house. Get the kids. Pack the car. We have to leave. Go! We should have never put his family in this position. I'm glad. He finally is coming to his senses, man. I just hope it's not too late. I wonder if they're going to see that... The other drawing that the ki other kid did. Where are we going, Daddy? We're going home, honey. Home, home, like you promised? Yeah. <laughs> oh, but if it's a sheriff, they'll let him go. They'll be like, good, leave. <laughs> it's him, too. Sheriff? License and registration. Driving pretty fast for this time of night, don't you think? Anything I ought to know about? Just trying to take your advice, that's all. <laughs> Which advice would that be? Leave town and never look back. Now, you weren't bullied away or anything, were you? I don't want to be reading in your book that angry town folks chased you out of here. There isn't going to be any book. No book? No, sir. You know what? Well, then... Forget this. I don't see any reason for me to have your autograph. That guy does a great job playing this like small town sheriff. Did you mean that? About the book? Yeah. Let's go home. The fact that the movie didn't end right there is not a good sign. Oh yeah, this goes in the office. Put in there on the right. Oh, what a dick. He only had deputy so-and-so. Oh, man, what is this now? The scorpion? Mr. Oswald, sorry it took so long to get back to you. Well, what am I looking at? You're looking at an engraving, an old sketch from the Dark Ages. He saw the snake, too. Early Christians believed that Bagula actually lived in the images themselves and that they were gateways into his realm. He would take possession of those who saw the images and cause them to do terrible things. Oh, gosh. If an image was destroyed, then the gateway would be closed and Bagula would no longer have access to this world, right? Mr. Oswald, what kind of book are you writing exactly? I'm not even sure I have a book anymore. Thank you for your time. Anytime. Dude. Delete it, yes. Empty trash, yeah. That might be important. So I'm guessing he did not destroy the gateway. Oh no. Dude, I, I, as soon as I saw it zooming on his face, I knew it. It's too late, man. <laughs> Extended cut endings. So he has to match it up to the right spool.
Dude, if he's calling you at this time, it's gotta be important. You know what time it is? I've been trying to call you all day. Mm-hmm, what's the problem? Okay, the problem is that you moved. The dates, the addresses, each family that you had me look up had previously lived in the house where one of the earlier murders took place. <sighs> Listen, Mr. Oswald, you just moved out of the last house in line. If this guy is still out there, you not only just sped up his timeline, you put yourself in it. <sighs> Thanks, deputy. Dude. Oh no. Oh no, man. It was the key. They were like possessed or something. It's deafening. <sighs> Dude, his daughter is possessed, I bet. I bet his daughter is. Dude, you guys are screwed. Oh, dude. Oof. Your daughter, dude. You guys are screwed. God. This whole, this family's screwed, man. And it's all his fault. The hell is that? Oh god, no, it's already happening. What did she put in that? What? I like that you made the movies longer. They're better this way. Oh no. Dude, he could have moved into a different house in Kentucky. He didn't have to move into that house and he would have been fine. He still never would have figured this out, but at least they would his family wouldn't be screwed, man. Oh god. Don't worry, Daddy. I'll make you famous again. Dude. Oh my god. Dude, this is so insane, man. Should have never moved to that house. Even if there was nothing supernatural about it, why would you move into that house? Oh no, we're gonna see him. He's in there. Oh. I feel like he's gonna bust out or something. That's disgusting, man. Behind her. <sighs> house painting. Dude. Someone else gonna move into that house now? It's like the box is... Oh, Jesus, man! Dang it. They had to get me with that last one, huh? I like this song. I like this song. So this thing, Bagul went back all the way from back in the day, man. Preying on people that long. Well, we just got done watching Sinister. Oh my gosh, man. This movie was terrifying. Not what I expected at all. Not that I knew what to expect, but kind of had me thinking in the beginning that this was going to be a mystery kind of whodunit of some kind of serial killer. And little by little, it just, you know, it started to develop into this supernatural thing. And that's the part I didn't expect. And supernatural stuff is what scares me the most. So, uh, yeah, this was a terrifying movie. It was a good movie. Let me go ahead and make sure I, I let you guys know that as well. I did enjoy this. Uh, and the thrill of being freaked the hell out. I know I was hiding my face for a good portion of this. I don't care. Call me a pussy. This was... <laughs> You know, I still had my eyes open. I just, I was hiding my face, but scary movie, man. They did scare me. The acting was excellent in this. 
And, you know, I, I did plan on mentioning how good uh, Ethan Hawke's acting was and uh, I guess Juliet Rylance. When they had that argument uh, close to almost before they moved out where they were screaming at each other, oh my gosh, especially Ethan Hawke, man. He was, uh, that was next level award winning acting in that scene. That was amazing. Uh, also the daughter having to do this kind of dark stuff and become possessed at the end. Um, great acting on her part. You know, I feel like there's a couple things in this that it could have developed, you know, the relationship with his family. At first I was thinking that a little better. But then again, I think that kind of helped drive home the point that Ethan Hawke had uh, kind of separated from reality and was so focused on fame and working on the book that he was uh, breaking ties with his family, you know? The makeup, a couple criticisms here, I guess. Um, the kids, the ghost kids and their makeup, that looked a little, I mean, they could have done better with that. They still look like some freaky ass kids, but the makeup could have been better. The design of the ghoul's mask, it, it doesn't make me, it doesn't scream ancient, you know, evil deity. It screams like uh, something a, a, you know, a serial killer would wear, like the scream mask or something. But yeah, you know, I don't have too many criticisms about this. Uh, it did its job as a horror movie. It scared the hell out of me. Uh, you know, I was trying to think about some of the other underlying themes that, you know, this movie, what it could be about, you know, metaphorically. I think uh, the main one is don't, don't do something for the wrong reason. Uh, don't chase after something just because of fame. It's not going to, you know, it's going to, it's not going to lead you anywhere. And uh, I think that's the main one. Uh, I think it also kind of touches on uh, familial relationships, the importance of uh, cherishing every moment with family, addiction, kind of had an alcohol addiction in this, mental health, not just with him feeling like he was going crazy and uh, not just with Ethan Hawke's character, uh, Ellison, but also with his son, who uh, already had a history of night night terrors. Yeah, they, you know, it was a, a real inside look into uh, what not to do uh, with your family. If you're a father, I guess, or a mother too, you know, you, they could swap places. But um, yeah, I, I, this movie had more substance than just a, just a horror movie. And I do appreciate that because it did have some other underlying themes. Yeah, if I had to rate this one, you know, not even thinking about the cool, like all the themes that were in this movie and that it's cool for having more than just scares in it. But just on the scares alone, I give this one 8.5. But anyway, guys, I think I'm going to wrap this one up. Uh, great movie. Uh, I did see also that there was a Sinister Part 2. I don't know if there was a Part 3. But if it's any good, let me know if I should uh, check that one out too. And a special shout out to uh, Linda who uh, suggested this one to me. She even suggested it last year and I never got around to it. That was gonna, supposed to be for last October. But uh, I'm, I'm glad I finally did. Uh, if you're still here in the video, thank you guys for taking the time out of your day to watch this. I hope you got something out of this. And if you have any other horror movies you want me to check out or other kind of movies, let me know in the comments. Yeah, well, we'll see you guys in the next one. Happy Halloween.